Jeannie and John Alcott welcome you to Word of Power broadcast today. This message can equip and empower you to achieve and receive what God has for you. We believe by the end of this teaching and time of prayer, you will feel the power of God in a greater way. You'll sense how near He is and how He desires to help you. As God's presence and anointing touches you, receive the miracles and answers waiting for you. We encourage you to contact us at the end of this broadcast. Jeannie and John are ready to pray in faith over your life. Now, receive a word of power. It's so good to be together in God's Word. Thank you for joining me. This is Jeannie Alcott. We're going to talk about what you can do when you're facing a difficult or a new situation. How many times a week do you come to a place where you have to figure out what you can do about something and you try to remain calm as you face that difficult or new time? And it may just be something simple, like a man who was describing how he was in an elevator going up to a high-rise building when they got stuck between the floors. What made it worse was they were stuck in the higher floors and the car of the elevator had quite a few people in it and some of them became frantic. You know, when we have a sudden jolt such as that, it can be easy to feel frantic about what can be done. And this was many years ago, and they didn't have cell phones with them. So the people began to beat on the door, hoping to get someone's attention. When that didn't work, they began to yell, hoping someone would be walking by and hear them. But nothing happened. No response. About that time, this man made his way past the people and got to the front of the car. Then he opened a tiny door in the wall and pulled out a telephone. Right away, it connected with a technician for the elevator. They had a short discussion, and in a short amount of time, the work was done to get the car functional again. What was it this man did? He stayed calm. He kept his wits so he could get the best action to get the results. If you want to get the best results as you face changes or challenges, you have to keep your wits. To keep your wits means to remain rational when you're under stress. Your mind keeps operating during that time, so you have productive thinking. You know, when you keep your wits about you, your thinking will be productive. You'll be doing things that help you face that change or challenge. Otherwise, we can make it worse if we get frantic. But if you have your wits, you are prepared and you can take action in the right way. That, in turn, will produce the result you want. Without keeping your wits, you won't have good reasoning ability. That, in turn, can weaken your faith. It can drain your courage and your energy when you're not calm. Hasn't that happened to you? It sure has me. By the time I got finished being upset or frantic about something, my energy had gone down and I didn't feel I could face the conditions as well as if I had stayed calm. This is what God was warning the prophet Jeremiah would happen. Jeremiah was in a time when the Israelites were facing drought and difficulty. So he was complaining to God about the conditions and what he was having to endure. He knew God had called him to be there for that time so he could give his word to the people. The word was that they must repent so their disobedience would stop causing hardship on their lives. Jeremiah was the messenger, but he sure didn't want to have to experience the challenges and hardships. Yet God had more for him to accomplish, but he was getting worn out. So as he was complaining about it, here's the response he received. The Lord said, So, Jeremiah, if you're worn out in this foot race with men, what makes you think you can race against horses? And if you can't keep your wits during times of calm, what's going to happen when troubles break, as the Jordan breaks when it floods? God was giving him a metaphor that if he thought he was facing challenges now and didn't seem to be able to handle them, how was he going to manage when his calling became even more challenging? If he couldn't keep his wits about him when things were calm, how was he going to face the future? He had to be ready to race against horses, to withstand the flood. He was coming up to a higher calling. Then God went on to reassure Jeremiah that he would protect him and the time would come when he would restore the land to the Israelites. Oh, we want to be able to race against horses. We want to withstand the flood. We're not going to get worn out, but keep our wits and stay calm. God has so much for us to receive and do. We have to be ready in our mind and spirit by staying calm. You see, God was helping Jeremiah realize he must keep his wits about him during that difficult time. He had to stay calm so that when troubles came, he would be able to accomplish what God had for him. 
but also be able to enter into the blessing and the miracle that was coming. So if we keep our wits, then we're ready and able to take action in the difficult or new circumstances. We can rise to the higher calling. You know, sometimes if we don't stay rational under stress, then our thinking doesn't operate well. And we don't want to be making wrong choices when we need our thinking to be what God desires. I have to tell you, I've seen so many of our ministry partners keep their wits when they were facing new or challenging times. When they contact us for prayer and intercession, we connect with our life. We pray over them, think about them, intercede, and write to them. We're interested in the journey they're on and helping them make it to the place God has for them. Many times on their journeys, the conditions become tough. They have to face something new that they're unsure about. But as we continue to communicate with each other and pray and stand in faith, I've noticed that they're able to be calm in spite of the conditions. And because of it, God is able to continue working for them even when they can't see it. Sure, there are moments of fighting fear and having thoughts that can unnerve them. That's normal and natural. But what's supernatural is they hang in there and they believe God will take care of them and help them come out in victory. They rise to a higher calling, as Jeremiah did. There's just one way we can do that. We have to keep our wits. That's how we hang in there and see God's work complete. Now, I'm going to share a story with you that's a great picture of a woman who kept her wits. I mean, she had to rise to a higher calling. And because of it, she became a part of one of the most important times in history. And really, that's what you're becoming. Spiritually, you are becoming an important part of this time in history, seeing God's will done in your life and family and on this earth. So he needs you to stay calm and keep your wits so he can work in your life for you and for others. This is what this woman did. Her name was Mary Hayes. She was married to a barber who then fought in the American Revolution. At that time, the wives could follow their husbands and join them at the army camp. So Mary chose to go to the area where her husband's troops were. At the camp, she would wash the uniforms for the men and care for the sick. But her real challenge was going to come when she was helping during a conflict. If she didn't keep her wits and what was about to happen, she would become unraveled and not be able to help herself or anyone else. The conflict took place in a town in New Jersey. It was summertime and it was hot. The Americans were fighting hard and the casualties were mounting. Mary Hayes was working as hard as she could to keep water from the nearby spring coming to the troops. She even remained on the field so she could care for the wounded. Can you even imagine hearing gunfire and cannons going on around you and still being able to keep your wits to stay calm and continue working? Yet, isn't that what you've done before in your life? You've been under fire, working hard, trying to win the conflict? They weren't physical cannons or gunfire, but they were still coming against your life. But just as Mary Hayes, you can keep your wits until you see victory. That day after Mary had cared for the wounded and brought drink to the troops, at one point her husband became wounded. And when he collapsed, she went over to where her husband's position was on the gun crew. And until that conflict was over, she helped the others keep that cannon firing. Because of it, she became a legend. They gave her a special name, Molly Pitcher. There's even a statue of her as Molly Pitcher who helped form the new nation. She had to rise to a higher calling, just as Jeremiah did. She had to run with the horses. You may not feel as Mary that you're a person of history, but you are. You're making spiritual history. I guarantee you just as sure as what Mary Hayes did to help bring victory was recorded, What you're doing to bring about victory is recorded in heaven's history. God sees you willing to enter the conflict against the enemy and keep your wits as you stand on his word and stand in faith. Whatever challenge or change you're facing, whatever difficulty or stress before you, stay calm. Keep your wits. You're about to see the enemy flee in the face of strength and power of God that's in you. You may feel as Mary. You're facing heavy conflict. Or you're as Jeremiah the prophet, facing difficulty and disappointment. But you can rise to the higher calling. God is coming to you now to help you keep your wits, because he wants you to know he's doing the work. Ooh, that's a good word. Keep your wits, because God is doing the work. As you stay calm, you can see the victory come. Let's go into prayer right now. There is such an anointing from God 
to give you strength and peace. Believe He's working for you as we pray. Father, you see what's challenging to my friend, but they are ready to race against the horses. They're keeping their wits because they know you are working. You're working for them to see great victory. And you're saying that is what's before them, a great victory. The enemy has sent great difficulty and challenges against them, but he cannot win. They refuse to forfeit what you have for them. So in the name of Jesus, I stand strong by the side of my friend. We're facing every challenge, knowing in our hearts they will win. They're calm on the inside and courageous on the outside. Even if the conflict seems heated, they're coming out of it in your hands, victorious, happy, and favored. We praise your name. Amen and amen. Oh, you can have a calm day now. After those words from God, you know what's coming. In spite of the conflict or the frantic conditions or something new going on, you know God is working. You'll be coming out of this in victory. This is what God wants you to believe. And John and I are believing it also. We know what He is speaking about your life. And we are ready to stand in faith for it to come to pass. So be sure to get in touch with us. Tell us what kind of challenges you're facing. As soon as we hear from you, we'll pray and intercede. We also want to write to you and give you words from God's Spirit for your life. So get in touch soon. Now here's our spiritual power line. Keep saying these words of faith. Speak them out over your life. That's when God can bring them to pass. So keep saying, I'm staying calm. I'm staying calm. You can stay calm in the conflict. Yes, hear those words. Stay calm in the conflict because you know victory is planned for you. And we want to help you enter into that victory. So be sure to get this message. The name of it is Stay Calm. We'll send you all five parts of it in the prayer times. Those times we have in God's presence. Just request offer number AM833. That's 833. We can send you a CD for a gift of $8 into the ministry, or you can download it from our website for a gift of $5. Just call or write or go to alcottministries.org. That's A-L-C-O-T-T ministries.org. And now just a reminder, these messages are not always available, so be sure to request it soon. And thank you so much for your giving into this ministry. You're keeping Word of Power messages going out to thousands of people and helping us fulfill so many more outreaches of this ministry. So John and I join you in giving today. Something else I want to mention. We have a gift for you. It's called the Power Packet. In this package, we have stuffed it full of good materials to minister to you. Spiritual articles, great personal stories of miracles that are happening. God wants you to know about these so you can believe for your own miracle. We have special gift offers, and most important, there is an opportunity for you to be a part of a personal prayer day that John and I want to have over your life. So be sure to request the Power Packet. Remember, this is our gift to you. And be sure to join me again tomorrow. This is Jeannie Alcott. Thank you for being with us today. We believe God's Spirit is moving in a mighty way. So don't miss the opportunity for Jeannie and John to pray over your life in a personal way. As you share with them, they will intercede by faith for you to receive all God has for you. Call 918-459-9191 or write to Alcott Ministries, Post Office Box 3400, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma 74013 or go to our website at alcottministries.org. That's A-L-C-O-T-T ministries.org. There you can also listen to Word of Power broadcasts as well as request special gift offers and be blessed by devotionals. Now, we encourage you to get a copy of this message and give a gift into God's work. Then, expect Him to grow your giving into wonderful miracles. Be with us next time for a Word of Power.